This is Crime Classics. I am Thomas Highland with another true story of crime. Listen. The High Sheriff of Hampshire County, Massachusetts, and deputies are carrying a coffin down the prison corridor, stopping in front of the cell of Mr. Jonathan Jewett, and opening the door. Brought you something, Mr. Jewett. Brought you your coffin. Set it down right here, men. You'll find your hanging cap inside, Mr. Jewett. I'd advise you to try it on to see it's not too tight. <laughs> There's been trouble on the gallows with a too tight hanging cap. Look in on you later. <laughs> Tonight, my report to you on Mr. Jonathan Jewett, how most peculiarly he cheated the hangman. Crime Classics, a series of true crime stories taken from the records and newspapers of every land, from every time. Your host each week, Mr. Thomas Highland, connoisseur of crime, student of violence, and teller of murders. Now, once again, Mr. Thomas Highland. <laughs> Nobody thought of rehabilitating criminals in 1815. Catch a man who committed a crime, or didn't pay his debts, or was not well enough liked, throw him into the local lockup and forget him. It was no different in Hampshire County, Massachusetts in this era. The jail was bleak and consisted of a series of stone pits of correct moisture content for the growth of a fungus on its surfaces. Of good temperature range to permit the flourishing of rats and some invertebrates of foul nourishment to quicken the descent of man into rot. And now, in a certain pit in this prison called Cell 4, lived three men together. George Bowen, pacing. The caged brute, pacing. Isaac Mitchell, humming. Motionless, shaggy Isaac, humming. Eighteen. 19, 20, 21, Lee Partridge counting, doing what he most liked to do, counting the cracks in stone from ceiling to floor. Tableau. Get along, Johnny. Fast. Fast, lad, or I'll drag you, so help me, in a way you won't care for much. Get along. I said it, Johnny, and I mean it. Now, here. Get in. Your home it is, Johnny. And don't take to it too nicely, because you won't stay too long. <clears throat> Sheriff? Yeah, Bowen. New one, Sheriff? Uh -huh. What's he done? Kill him a woman. Oh, now? Yeah. Uh -huh. Hang him? Month from today, Bowen. He'll kick it to wind. Month from today. One, two, three, four, five, six. Stop it! Seven. Stop it! George now. Now, George now, you. How George now. George now, you. You start humming more, Isaac, you get the same. George? What? What do you want? Listen, George. What? Well, why don't we well, why don't we talk to the one just came in? Why don't we slip out the stone and talk? <laughs> That's right, George. Talk to him. Psst. Psst, you. In there. Hey there, you. You in there. Over here. Can't see me. Come here to the wall. Bend down now. Halfway to the bottom now. I've taken the stone out so there's a hole big enough to see through. Bend close now. My name's George Bowen. What's yours? Jewett. Jonathan Jewett. Murderer, I hear. Murderer, I hear. Didn't mean to. A woman, I hear. Didn't mean to. Tell me about it. Tell me, tell me. Didn't mean to. Tell me! 
Well, welcome, old Johnny Jewett, lad. We're cellmates, we are, and we're sharing things now we are, old Johnny Jewett. Tell me now how, how you happen here. It was a lady I hear. Please tell me. I I, I, I met her at, at Boswick's Tavern. She was sitting there and... And she had yellow hair. No more you'll tell me, Johnny. For now, she was sitting there and she had yellow hair. Save the rest for later, Johnny. Talk a little later, Johnny. Well, that's just the start. Yellow of... hair. Isaac, Blee, he killed a lady. And she had golden hair that shined and was soft as any silk you ever touched. Going to hang him. Poor boy. Poor boy. Going to hang him. And we won't get to see it. Now, this was one of the biggest frustrations of all. The three friends never got to see anyone hang. The gibbet was outside the north wall of the jail and so situated they could see nothing. Isaac, who had extraordinary hearing, often claimed he heard the trap door drop, and the three of them would feel then somewhat entertained. And so the days of emptiness spun away, but now, with the arrival of Jonathan Jewett, there was a very pleasant diversion, and this is what it was. George Bowen would pull out the stone. Jewett? Tell me. Tell me more. Y- yellow hair and apple cheeks. T- tall for a woman and walked easily. And a few hours later... Jewett? Walk, walked easily and, and the first time I saw her, she, she came to me like some floating thing. That was enough for a while. Enough of the story. But one day, you remember... All right. Lively. Lively, men. And right in here. Uh, brought you something, Mr. Jewett. Brought you your coffin. Set it down right here, men. You'll find your hanging cap inside, Mr. Jewett. I'd advise you to try it on to see it's not too tight. <laughs> There's been trouble on the gallows with a too tight hanging cap. Looking on you later. <laughs> you won't hang me! You won't hang me! You won't hang me! <laughs> Johnny? Johnny Jewett? Come here. Come here a minute, Johnny. Like, like some, some floating thing. Her name was... was... Hannah. No, no, listen. I don't want to hear that right now. Listen. They brought your coffin, didn't they? Hanging caps inside, isn't it? Bowen. Uh Uh-huh. What... What's it like? What? Hanging. A, a, A public hanging. You really want to know, Johnny? I want to. A show. Big show. There's some women's always there. And I've seen them. Come over and pinch your cheeks before you go up the stairs to the hangman. And the things they say. And there's people there that always cry. Same people all the time. And kids running around and hawkers. And you'll be a show, Johnny. A big show. There's... What? What, what, What's the matter? Johnny. What? What is it? Wouldn't hang me. Why not? Wouldn't hang me, Johnny. What? What, what, Bowen? Bowen? Bowen, tell me! Bowen! Bowen, open up the door! Mm-hmm. 
We'll have fun, Isaac. Oh, I tell you, we'll have fun. Blee. You don't hit me. Not going to hit. And to tell you, we're going to have fun. Don't hit me. We're going to have fun. See? He's been knocking like that for the last ten hours. Think I ought to open it to him? Born. 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 <laughs> fun. Isn't this fun? <laughs> Of course, it's fun. Was you knocking on the wall, Johnny? Please, please. Please what? Listen. Yeah. I'm not gonna, not gonna tell you about Hanley anymore. Unless, unless, unless I what? Tell me how you wouldn't hang. You want to know, Johnny? Yes. Really want to know, don't you? Yes. Can't stand the thought of those people jeering you to die. Can't stand that, can you? Please tell me. Please, please. Sure. I'll tell you. Yes? Hang yourself, Johnny. Hang yourself, Johnny. Hang yourself, Johnny. Hang yourself. It's easy. It's easy, Johnny. Do it. Do it. And I'd be the only one to watch. Isaac don't want to watch. Neither does Blee. Just me. Do it, Johnny. Cheat them, Johnny. Cheat the hangman. Cheat the crowd. Oh, do it. Bowen? Oh, do it, Johnny. How? You are listening to Crime Classics and your host, Thomas Highland. Is there a possible connection between a strange ivory monkey and the death of a wealthy oil magnet? Mr. Keene believes so and sets out to prove his contention in the case of murder and the ivory monkey, Friday night on CBS Radio. Don't miss Mr. Keene at his exciting best this Friday evening on most of these same stations. And now once again, Thomas Highland and the second act of Crime Classics. And his report to you on Mr. Jonathan Jewett, how most peculiarly he cheated the hangman. Winters, they say, are not as bleak today or as furious as they used to be in Massachusetts. Some storms in Northampton, I've heard it recalled, appeared from the north like shining pellets, swirled in, exploded. Then the snow was composed of great northern glaciers and frozen sea spray, and another thing, a vast desolation from the pits of the world. And so it was in 1815. The winter broke early, and the first snow blanketed the village, piled high the drifts against the stone of the jail, sent bitter winds down its freezing corridors. <sighs> Condemned man, Jonathan Jewett, not knowing any longer whether he shudders from cold or a soul numbed with terror. Cold. Cold. Said a prisoner named Blee Partridge and hugged his bluing arms about him. Isaac Mitchell sounds from the frozen recesses of his mind. George Bowen having fun, watching Jonathan Jewett through a hole in the wall. George? George? Yeah? What's he doing? Well, well. What's he doing, George? Interested, ain't you? Now you're interested. Tell me what he's doing. Staring at his coffin. Now tell me what he's doing. Shivering. What's he doing now? 
Looking at his coffin. Now? Opening the lid to it. Now? Taking out the hanging cap. Taking out the hanging cap. What's he doing? What's he doing, George? He's starting to put it on. No! No! Johnny. Johnny, come here. Come here, Johnny. He didn't put the hat on, did he? Come here, Johnny. Come. Come. Hello, Johnny. Now, why do you get yourself all riled up like that? Trying to put on your hanging cap. Now, yesterday, you asked me how to hang yourself. So you won't have to go through all this, laddie. And so you won't hang in that freezing and all. How? You're going to do it, Johnny? You're going to do it? I don't know. I don't know. How? I'm going to help you, Johnny. It's the truth I am. Now, tell me, Johnny... Tell me about the lady you killed. Tell me. Come on. I don't know. I, I, I forgot. Oh, now, come on. I don't know. I forgot. Forgot? Let me alone. Let me alone. Let me alone. All right. All right, Johnny boy. <laughs> cool. 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 Get out of the cot, please. You don't hit me. Get out. Get out. When I say get, get. All right, George. All right, George. All right, all right. Take this ticking now if you're caught. Huh? Tear a strip. Tear another. Now, we got what makes a rope. Oh, George. Yeah, Blee. The strips. Give them to me. Give them to me. Give them to me. Sure, Blee. Sure. Here. Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's it, Blee. One. Braid me a rope from Three. those strips, Blee. One. Braid two, me a rope from those three. strips. One, two, three. Mr. Jordan, how do you feel? Came to tell you something, Mr. Jordan. Come Wednesday, there'll be a hanging, and there'll be you. The governor sent word, and he had this to say. Uh, no reprieve. So there's going to be a hanging. Now, I've got to ask you some things, Mr. Jordan. Because the law provides that I do. Do you want a man of the cloth, Mr. Jewett? Do you need a man of the cloth? I've seen them come, Mr. Jewett. And I've seen them go. And I've got to tell you this. Those that ask for the men of the cloth seem better fit for what's going to happen to them. The hanging of them, that is. So if you want a fellow come up and preach to you, talk to you... You just say the word. Now, I got to ask you this. The hanging cap when you tried it on, was it too tight? Was it too snug, Mr. Jewett? And can you breathe all right, I'd like to know. And the coffin ain't too narrow, is it? Seeing as you're a, a smallish man and all, but it ain't too narrow, is it? Now, something else, too. How... You're to behave. There's always a kind of woman comes, come shine, come rain, come snow, a kind that's always there, a toucher, a walker over, to pluck your sleeve or pinch your cheek. You pay her no mind but look ahead, and whatever else comes in front of you or alongside... To distract you, pay it no mind. And pay the jeers no mind or the weeping, but mount the steps. Now, listen, Mr. Jordan. If uh, you've got a little something, a dollar, a two, a three, I'll be glad to see the hangman gets it, and he'll treat you prettily. Tie the rope just right, and adjust just right, and drop you good, straight, and true. And not make you wait too long a time. 
Think it all over. I'll return again tomorrow. Johnny. I'll do it. I want to do it. Do what, Johnny? Hang myself. Well, I'm going to hang myself, Bowen. How? I'll, I'll stand on the coffin and stand under the window and, and kick away the coffin. What are you going to use for a rope? I don't know. I got a rope. Give it to me. Well, I don't know. Bowen. Well, I just don't know. Let's see your rope. Rope's the easiest. Rope's the only way. You get simple and use your shirt or something. You're liable just to stand there and cough. Rope's the only way. Let's see your rope. Sure, Johnny. See it? Give it to me. You haven't finished the story, Johnny. I forgot. I can't remember, I swear. Oh. She w- She was very homely and... And I was very lonely, and she stole from me. Shut up, Johnny. Here's the rope. George? Yeah? What's he doing? Staring. What's he staring at, George? The rope. What's he doing now, George? Got his head bowed down, and he ain't doing nothing. Now what's he doing? Walking. Now? Walking around. He ain't put the rope down, has he? No. What's he doing now? He ain't doing nothing. Is the coffin under the window? Yeah. Has he tied the rope to the bars? Yeah. What's he doing now? What's he doing? That's it. That's it, Johnny. That's it. George? Is he? Yep. The next morning was Tuesday, and a very cold day. Since it was the day before the execution, holes had to be chopped out of the ice in order to set in the scaffold posts. Once this was done, however, the rest was easy. A simple platform at the top of 13 steps, and a primitive but often adequate spring mechanism as a trap door. Having given the workmen any special instructions they may have needed, the sheriff re-entered the prison and walked to Mr. Jewett's cell to inform him what all the hammering had been about. Jewett? He said. Jewett? He went on. Hanged yourself? He noted. Dead? He made sure of it. Then vent his spleen. Cheat! Cheat! To have done such a thing, to have cheated the law and the hangman, and the gallows being fairly built to have done such a thing. Cheat! How did you? (sighs) Born! Come here, born! You killed him, didn't you? Killed who? Jonathan Jewett. Killed him? Gave him a rope. He's hanging with strips of bedding, and his bedding ain't touched. Must be you made him a rope. I ain't killing him, Sheriff, giving a man a rope. What did you do to him? Now, look for yourself, Sheriff. That stone wall between us. What could I do but talk to him? You talked him into doing it, then? You were saying that? Just told him how it is to get hanged in public. No way for a man to die. Is it a way for a man to die, Sheriff? You gave him rope and you told him what to do. 
You know what that makes you, Bowen? What? A murderer. Same as if you slipped a knife into him. That's what you are. A murderer. George Bowen was indicted and brought to trial. A charge, homicide, murder of Jonathan Jewett, brought to trial on an interesting charge. And the prosecution had this to say. By his own confession, the prisoner admits he advised Jonathan Jewett to take his own life. And a man who advises death, I say, is a principal in murder. No other causes incited Jewett to destroy himself. No other causes but the advice of the defendant. The living instrument of a murder is a murderer and must himself die. I charge the jury to find this man guilty. And the defense had this to say. I say that the defendant is perhaps guilty of being accessory to murder, but this is not the charge here. The charge is murder. And while I do not stand here to justify his crime, I say to you, if you convict him as charged, you yourselves are guilty of murder under the existing form of law. And the jury foreman had this to say. <clears throat> Not guilty. So Bowen was returned to his cell. A certain pit in Northampton, Massachusetts prison called Cell 4. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. <laughs> In just a moment, Thomas Highland will tell you about next week's crime classic. Jonathan Jewett, tonight's crime classic, was adapted from the original court reports and newspaper accounts by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. The music was composed and conducted by Bernard Herman, and the program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Thomas Highland is portrayed on radio by Lou Merrill. In tonight's story, Lee Millar was heard as Jonathan Jewett, and Elliot Lewis as George. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Vic Perrin, Junius Matthews, and Byron Kane. Bob Lamont speaking. And here again is Thomas Highland. Next week, Mexico City just 14 years ago. Tippy Tippy Tin was popular north of the border, and south, a man with four names and an alpenstock had an appointment with history. It's listed in my files as The Assassination of Leon Trotsky. Thank you. Good night. One of the most colorful practices of the Old West was that of sending for mail-order brides. This Saturday night on CBS Radio's program titled Gunsmoke, hear the fascinating details of the arrival in Old Dodge of just such a woman, with romance and double trouble resulting for the citizenry and for United States Marshal Matt Dillon. Don't miss Gunsmoke on most of these same stations this Saturday night. Gangbusters go into action Saturday nights on the CBS radio network. <laughs>